This is the house of bread. The house of bread. This is the house of bread. Oh, yeah. Where we're building leaders, changing the world. Welcome to guiding light us and me. Oh, yeah. God has a word for you. A word for yes, you. there is a word for you. We were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us. Whereof we are glad, beloved. It's your season of laughter. A season, a season, beloved. A season is a time frame in which God usually brings to pass a definite counsel he has set for either his people in particular or for the whole world in general. Listen, there is breaking forth a new season of God. And that God ordained season is a season of laughter. No, but like in every season that comes and goes, it is not everyone who benefits from the blessing of each season. Praise God. This morning, God's assignment for me is to bring you in so you can enjoy the blessings of this breaking season. Someone say, I'm ready. I can't hear you. Someone say, I'm ready. That shall therefore stand on your way to keep you from coming into this season of laughter for your life. Hear me, child of God, it shall suffer disgrace in the name of Jesus. To bring you in, we must first get to understand and accept the truth of God's heart for you. Then we will address the adverse circumstances that the enemy will want to use to have you discouraged and distracted and then have these adversities demolished in prophetic praying. What is God's heart for you? God has ordained laughter for each of his children. Are you a child of God? Are you a child of God? When you understand and accept that truth, as simple as it is. Then you will be able to stand your ground. This is important because otherwise the devil will deploy your past and present experiences. Someone's experience. To create doubt in your heart against the plans of God for your life. Beloved, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. I say this because I know what I'm planning for you, says the Lord. He says, I have good plans for you. Look at God's heart. He says what? I have good, who is talking there? No, 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 no. I, I need you to go, I need you to get, get, get alive. Awake, be awake. Help me touch your neighbor, 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 neighbor. Hear yeah, yeah, God's heart. He says, I have what? Good plans for you. Not plans to hurt you. Did you hear what God said? Not plans to what? Come on now. Someone listen to me. Therefore, anytime I'm going through hurt, God has nothing to do with it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Is someone with me? Anytime I'm going through pain, anytime I'm going through difficulties, anytime I am walking through the prickings of life, God has no hand in it. God has no hand in it. Now, if God is not involved, then I also know that someone else is involved. Hello. 
I, I know. If God's hand is not in, if that is not God's plan for me, then I'm not going to sit down on my chair and weep and, and, and as though God is against me. Listen, the only time I will weep is when I know God is against me. But as long as God is for me, who can be against me? As scripture says, I have good plans for you, not plans to hurt you. He says, I will give you hope. And what? A good future. How many of us have walked into difficulties that have brought tears in our eyes? How many of us have, 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 have come into circumstances that have worked pains in our spirit? How many of us have come into circumstances that have challenged our faith and have reduced us to nothing? I'm here to let you know that's not God's heart for you. The enemy is out to make sure he makes a means made of your life but hey God is speaking here his plans for you are good he says I have good plans for you I will give you hope and what a good future God's heart for you is that none shall cast their young, nor be barren in the land. It says the number of your days I will fulfill. Exodus 23, 26. Yet, beloved, contrary to God's heart, many of us are experiencing all kinds of abortions in our affairs. We are suffering all kinds of barrenness in our daily dealings as well as death painfully early death how can God say one thing and another happen to me I know the enemy is at work therefore hello I curse every spirit of abortion no that amen is, is sleeping amen I curse every spirit of abortion working against you. And I command it to dry up in the name of Jesus. Now every evil spirit of barrenness troubling you, I command to catch fire in the name of Jesus. You shall not die young. No, I say you shall not die young. I say you shall not die young. And every early death arranged against you, I command for closed in the name of Jesus. God's heart, beloved, for you is that in all things you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Talk John 2. Yet, contrary, beloved, to God's heart, Many of us are reeling in lack, abject poverty, and ill health. And I'm sick and tired of watching God's word and experiencing something else. So I take a stand this morning and I declare over you that every spirit of lack and poverty demeaning your life shall stay paralyzed from this moment in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of infirmity and ill health that has tormented your life, I command arrested and held bound forever in the name of Jesus. God's heart, beloved, for you is that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and that every tongue that rises up in judgment against you, you shall condemn. Isaiah 54 verse 17. Yet, beloved, Contrary to God's heart, many of us are daily falling victims to enemy weapons and are being maligned by rising satanic tongues. Hear me, child of God. 
every weapon formed against you. I declare dysfunctional right now. In the name of Jesus, every tongue rising up in judgment against you, on your behalf, I arise and I command it condemned perpetually. In the name of Jesus, God's heart, beloved, for you is that you shall be planted in his courts and you shall flourish in his palaces. Psalms 92 verse 13. Yet, beloved, contrary to God's word, contrary to his heart, many of us are daily being uprooted and our move to flourish constantly impeded. Who saith a thing and it comes to pass when Jehovah has not commanded it? Every satanic move to uproot you from where you are planted, I command checkmated right now. In the name of Jesus, every power impeding your every move to flourish, I command strangulated right now. In the name of Jesus, God's heart, beloved, for you is that no good thing, someone say no good thing, <laughs> will he withhold from you. Oh my God. And he says he shall satisfy your mouth with good thing and renew your youth as the eagle. Psalms 84, 11 and 103 verse 5. Hear me yet, beloved. Contrary to God's heart, many of us are daily being denied the good things of God. And in this place, all we get is pain and sorrow consuming our youthfulness. I take a stand on your behalf. This morning, everything that has stood against God's good things from locating you, I turned it into God's enemy. Let it suffer divine devastation. In the name of Jesus. Everything disaffecting your youthfulness and fruitfulness, I command arrested right now. And I hold them perpetually in divine paralysis. In the name of Jesus. Beloved, God's heart for you. I'm just breaking it down. Is that you shall take root downwards and bear fruit upwards. Hello. Are you still with me here? What is his heart for you? That you shall take what? Root downwards. And what? And that you shall bring forth fruit that shall abide in abundance. That is Isaiah 37, 31. John 15, 16. Yet, contrary to God's heart, many are stagnated and are fruitless in our endeavors. Hear me, child of God. I know agents of stagnation. I address them in your life. I address them around your life. Every agent of stagnation that is walking, it's impossible for you to bear root downwards uh, that you may come up and bear fruit upwards. Uh, I command them uh, destroyed by fire in the name of Jesus. Every man, every woman that has sold themselves to the devil in witchcraft, frustrating your fruitfulness, I command arrested and I declare them paralyzed in the name of Jesus. Hear me, child of God. God cannot lie. We are making him out to be a liar. He says... This is my heart for you. In six troubles, yes, in seven, shall no evil touch you, nor any plague come nigh your dwelling. Job 5, 19, Psalms 91, verse 10. Yet, contrary to God's heart, many of us have our lives filled with so many afflictions as though we are ourselves the warehouses of troubles. I open the door of your life. Father, if I be your servant, honor my word. I open the doors of your life. And I empty your life of every affliction. I empty your life of every trouble. 
your life ceases to be a warehouse for troubles in the name of Jesus hear me child of God this is what God said in Job 5 20 to 22 I want us to read it together and I want us to read it slowly want to go Where you see D, put me. Make it very personal. Want to go? He shall redeem me from death. And in war, from the power of the sword. 21. I shall be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall I be afraid of destruction when it cometh. 22. At destruction and famine. I shall laugh. Neither shall I be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Can God lie? No, God can lie. No, he lies often. Okay, can, can God lie? Can God lie? No, talk to me. Can, can, God, can God lie? So who is lying? Your circumstances are lying. I am a child of God. I read in my Bible. And God cannot mislead us. Hey. If it is my circumstances that are lying. Then I know. Because I do not war. Or fight. Or battle against flesh and blood. Then my circumstances. Are not moved by flesh. And blood. He says. We fight against principalities. And Hours. That makes me to know that my circumstances have been adjudged by principalities and powers. And because the influence is under my circumstances, behind my situations, are of the devil, his hands can be broken. No, you didn't hear what I said. His hands can be broken. You know why? He is not stronger than my God. I don't know about him. The devil is not stronger than my God. That is why I have chosen not to believe my circumstances. Ah, they are with me. Hello. In the present. Yes, I am facing and feeling hello and experiencing what they are doing but i will not accept them as the truth for my life oh my god i wish i could communicate this to you when you are going through you are going through that cannot describe you so it was david that explained it to us he says i shall not die but live to declare the works of God. And then he came face to face with death. In the valley of death. And death said to him. You are mine to overcome. He said to death. Though I walk through. The valley of the shadow of death. There is a walking through that happens. And whilst you are walking through. You will feel the impact. Whilst you're walking through, you will feel the influence. But it does not describe you. What you do not accept cannot be you. Can I say that one more time? Until you accept a thing, it cannot be identified with you. Hello. So, it is enough saying to this sickness, you know, that my sickness... You owned it, you have identified with it. You know, that my challenge. You know, that my trouble. You know, that my circumstance. No, no, it's not yours. It's a circumstance around you. It's a situation around you. It's, it's trying to get your cooperation. It's trying to recruit you that it may identify with you when you identify with it. This morning, God has sent me to awaken you to understand and accept that everything else lies except him. He said, let all men, how many men? All men be liars and he alone be true. His word they cannot fail. That is his heart for you. Let it happen that what you're going through is contrary 
right to what he has said. But you are going through. You are not there. You are going through. You are going through. You are going through. And as long as you are going through. You are coming out. I say you are coming out. I say you are coming out. In the name of Jesus. Beloved. God has therefore. For each of us. Is that at all times. We be a people of laughter. Pastor, it's hard. I know. It was not easy for Jesus either. Hello. It wasn't easy for him. <laughs> ah, he's been through it. So he knows exactly what you're going through. Hello. How can I laugh? When my body is really in pain. Why should you cry? When you know. In that pain. The devil is only lying through your circumstances. Are you with me? Why should you cry? When everything you have done. Had come out nothing. Why? Why should you laugh? When everything you have done. Had come out nothing. Question is, why should you cry? When you know that that circumstance is only a demonstration of the lies of the devil. Is someone hear what I'm saying? Listen, all of these things has a beginning. It has an end. Can we take that a little bit deeper? Even your very life has a beginning has an ending. How much more the circumstances of your life? Because those circumstances must be there. Those circumstances can only be there if your life is there. I, I don't need to rush you. I, I, I'm trying to bring your mind up to par that you may accept and understand or understand and accept. Your life has a beginning. It has an ending. Your circumstances, the things you call your situations, will not be except you are in existence. Am I correct? Now, if they are in existence only because you are in existence, why should you think that you are in a state of defeat. I need you to please understand this. What we think is what makes us. I read it in my Bible. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What are you thinking right now? Concerning the things that are happening in your life. Concerning what you experience right now. Maybe you are at a place of great difficulty. And you're telling yourself you are never going to succeed in life. You are not the first to so think and say. Maybe you are going through a difficulty, a problem. And you're saying there is no way out. No, you are not the first. You are not the first. They were three boys. Not in their own country. Brought in from another land. Given privileges. As far as the people were concerned. And as far as the king of the new nation in which they lived was concerned. They had abused their privileges. As far as the king and the people of that nation were concerned. These boys have abused their privileges. And they were worthy of death. For them, they sang the song Non Demetis. It was over. Listen to me. Never close the page of your life. Never. Never. 
Don't let the devil move you to close the page of your life by reason of your circumstances. These boys came to the king face to face. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know them. And they looked at the situation. To all intents and purposes, as man's eyes can see, there was no way out. Have you been there before? No way out. Who, who, who knows the no way out situation? I, I, I'm stuck. Listen, let me tell you, you are not stuck. Something great is about to befall you. And it's for good. He says, what was his heart for you? I have good plans. Don't ever forget that. I have what? Good plans for you. They told the king, king, two things. Either our God will come and deliver us, but if there is no way out, we will burn. Let's die! A young girl also said the same thing. Esther. Okay. The highest thing you got on me, all these adversities around me, all these circumstances, all these situations, if I don't exist, you cease to exist. So, if I die. So what you do not fear cannot influence your life. These boys didn't know that there is a way in the fourth man. Hello? They were, they heated the fire seven times over, put them inside and everyone expected to smell their burn. But no. That was the original fire. Hello. I told them on Wednesday that is the original fire and the fake fire. When the original fire meets the fake fire, the original fire will consume the fake fire and the fake fire will have no power. Listen to me. The men that threw them in because the business of the king was urgent were the ones that were killed. Which fire did you think consumed those men? No, not the fire they put in. Because before these boys entered the fire, the original fire had entered the fake fire, consumed it. It was his fire that consumed the people that threw them in and then provided air conditioning effect for the boys. Where they did not see a way out, there was a way out. Never ever close the page, the page of your book. No. Allow God to write and conclude it with revelation. 